Well, it, because it was personal, and, and Sebastian is, knows the world. His father is a great character. Uh, Laura Teruso is uh, Italian American from the New York uh, Italian American neighborhood. She knows that world, so I knew I had she had that protection with, between the two of them that we're not going to go off in some cliche or silly thing. So it was it was a good project to work on. I love this script because I love comedies, obviously. Um, it felt like an old-fashioned comedy, which I love, and I love the love story between Sebastian and my character, and the story of the love story between he and his father, which I thought was great. And also, it's like Robert De Niro, so yeah, please, can I pay you? So yeah, it was really, it was fun. I don't know, Ellie's journey in the film? I think that she sort of realizes that her family is insane, and that I don't know, it's just such a love story between the two of them and that they have have each other's backs and that if she's ever not felt supported in sort of the most healthy way, it's this relationship she has with Sebastian, which is just so beautiful and they're like best friends and supportive and also about sort of, you know, growing up and finding your own footing with the world. I don't know, we just had, he's one of my favorite people I've ever, one of my favorite co-stars I've ever had. Um, I don't know, our, our relationships with our partners are very similar, and so I felt so safe with him, and I felt like, he felt like a real partner in crime. And um, we just, ha I think we just, I don't know, you, chemistry's a weird thing. Like, you never know if it's gonna work, or sometimes you may really like somebody, but then you get on camera, and it's like it doesn't work, but something, with Sebastian and I, it was so easy from the jump. It was so easy. So I adore him. Um, she's the cutest thing ever. I mean, she's so, like, she's so her own person. And, like, Sebastian and I would be like, look at her. She's just like, she's like with Robert De Niro. She's got this huge movie. It's all on her shoulders. And she just, every day, was always in her power never overbearing, always helping you. She always let you try everything. And so, I don't know, I thought she really stepped up and was her brightest, most confident self. And she's really talented and kind. So it was, she was wonderful. She was, I don't know, I'm just so proud of her and so happy to, when I met her, we had a three hour meeting. It was my first meeting uh, after COVID or, you know, with the whole COVID thing. And we sat outside and we talked for like three hours about film. So it was amazing. So uh, the story of this movie about my father started in Linville, North Carolina. My, my wife comes from a very wealthy family. And uh, we would go there, we still do every 4th of July, very waspy, very white. And I come from a working middle class family, so it was kind of like these two worlds colliding while I was up there. And I had the idea of doing a movie where, basically, loosely based on my life, where these two families kind of come together. And yes, there's differences, but ultimately, at the end of the movie, you see that, you know, although there's differences, people, people get along. So. Uh, I never thought this thing would get made. I wrote it with my buddy Austin Earl, and next thing you know, Robert De Niro loves it, and now we're in Alabama shooting the damn thing. So it was it was crazy. I used to wait at tables at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills. I met him there in 2005, just waiting on him. Then, uh, fast forward, I worked with him on The Irishman, and then uh, he got the script. It's not like I, I had the man's number, and I called him and said, you want to be my dad? You know, agents sent him the script, he read it, and then he wanted to like read it out loud with a group of actors, so we flew to New York, he read it out loud, and then afterwards it wasn't like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna, like, we left, the next thing you know, it was like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna do this, and he was in between projects, we, we put it in between two of his other movies, and uh, now I'm here hosting the cinema con. <laughs> I like Laura because she, it's almost like we grew up in the same environment. Uh, she's an Italian American and, as well as I, and she knows the nuances of Italian families. Uh, some of the movie is a little cultural, so uh, you have to have somebody that kind of understands 
the family dynamic in an Italian family. Not that you have to be Italian to understand what's going on, but they're just like little nuances that, you know, even some of the Italian words, uh, she knows Italian more than I do, so she was kind of giving him Italian words to say. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was very important to have her on board. I was very serious on this thing as far as like, I was worried and nervous because I was working with you know, really seasoned actors, and Robert De Niro, probably the best of our time, so it wasn't like I was goofing around. I was, they all cut, and I went back to my lines and, and whatnot, so I wasn't like, I wasn't really funny as far as, uh, like, the class clown on set. I think the big test to say yes or no to a film, but especially if it's a comedy, is if it touches you, if it makes you laugh, and the script for What About My Father did both <laughs> on the first reading. Well, um, she's a, the character Tigger that I play, she's a senator. And she's a senator of her generation. So she's had to, as a woman, fight her way to the top. And I think that as good a mother as she wishes and thinks she is sometimes, I think that her family has played second fiddle to her career. So now that she's still working, still vibrant, uh, she's looking at maybe changing that. And within the course of the story, it speeded up her kind of education of allowing people in and accepting more and letting go of control. I mean, I think, I think Tigger's a control freak and she liked things to be put in a very precise box. So when she meets the Robert De Niro character and his son, it's not what she expects or wants for her daughter. But in the end, it's exactly what she should have. Well, I think the person who's most responsible for the atmosphere on any film set is the director. And Laura Terizo was absolutely a master at that. She really cast it so well. And each take that we did, try this, what about that? And we would break each other up because there was a feeling that we wanted to just get the best take, no matter what it took, how embarrassing it could be, or what could go right or wrong. So um, she, she let our strengths shine. She let us improvise. If there was a line that she liked better, or she would say, okay, uh, keep rolling, uh, let's try this line. And she would think about that line as a writer herself because of what we were doing, and she wanted to add to it and support it. So when you have that kind of leadership, you feel safe as an actor, and you also feel that you can do something which is so important, which is to play. I mean, we got to play and have fun. And I think that's part of um, an experience like this, which shows in the relationships, not just of the characters, but of the actors who play them. I think that good comedies like About My Father are really about family, because we're all connected to some kind of family. It doesn't matter where you live or what nationality or what you like or don't like, you can relate to the challenges and the kind of, I don't know, I, I, I guess it's a belonging. You've been there, you've had that kind of crazy uncle or that sister who's like, after a couple of drinks is difficult to deal with or the puzzling uncle or the sister or the new baby that's coming, the pregnant, all different stages of life is what you experience within that family unit. And it's used, I mean, Shakespeare, all of his, <laughs> of his great plays are about family. And he has comedy in it. I'm not saying we're doing Shakespeare. But in its own way, it is the same track of storytelling, which is about the wonderful aspects and the horrific aspects and the challenging aspects of these people you love, adore, and in some places, in some instances, can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, fertile it's ground, fertile I, ground for comedy. I think well, there's a release of tension when you're laughing with other people. And we've gone through so much in the last two and a half years. And uh, it's going to take a long time to get back to where we were. But there's something about the communal activity of people coming together and being told a story 
to enjoy that, to release the tension, to take your mind off of what you're going through, the situation that the world is in, and communally be together and exhale. When I read this script, and I've been reading scripts for the last, I don't know, five years, I immediately felt like, oh my God, I have to make this movie. I have to direct this movie because it, Sebastian's life and my life have paralleled in a lot of ways. Uh, his father immigrated from Sicily in the 1960s. My mother immigrated from Sicily in the 1960s. And so when I read it, I just felt an immediate connection to the material, to the world, to the characters, especially the character of Salvo, which uh, is played by Robert De Niro. And was just, I was all in from the, from the jump. I, I was like, I have to tell this story. <laughs> oh my God. It was a dream come true to work with this cast. I mean, top down, like uh, Bob and Sebastian have such tremendous chemistry and Bob uh, brings everyone up, you know, to his, to his level. He's such an extraordinary actor and filmmaker and collaborator. And it's, it was such an honor to work with him. Kim Cattrall is one of the funniest women in, in show business. She's just brilliant and hilarious and so kind and warm. And Leslie Bibb, also hilarious. Anders Holm, David Rashi. Can we talk about David Rashi and what a genius this guy is? I mean, the whole, the, the whole cast, Brett Dyer, just an extraordinary group and everyone was so lovely and from from the first day where we all were together on set because we didn't meet until that first you know that first day I, we were a family it, it, we really became a family but uh, bob and sebastian specifically they're both hilarious i mean sebastian is such a brilliant physical comedian bob is so funny and and I, I, I love seeing him in comedies because he's, his comedic instincts are so dead on. I feel like he's going to walk up behind me at any moment. <laughs> he's like. not going to Okay. <laughs> um, and there's, uh, we did a table read in New York uh, when, when, you know, when Bob read the script. And seeing them side by side, it was like, oh, yeah, this could work. They, they look like father and son. We have a movie here. Like, they really, they had such a good chemistry just from the jump so it was yeah really amazing to watch and and Sebastian had never been a start leading man before so this is his first you know leading man role and to to watch him be guided and and taught really by by Bob was just so cool and like he he, he just brought it you know they they were they were so good together and I'm so excited for you to see the film and their performances when you work with this level of um, actors and improvisers, you want to encourage them to play, and we co we come up with alts on the day, and and so that was that scene in particular was really fun. You know, I I want this for all my films that they are both hilarious and heartfelt. So I want it to kind of be surprising that at the end of the movie, you know, that throughout you're laughing, 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 and then at the end. You're like, why am I crying? And, and that's, that's like, I hope, the signature of all of my films, that there's some deep emotion that comes up at the end. Because it, it, this is a really universal story that is also very personal to those of us who made it. So I'm, I'm excited to share it with the world.